Warning, this is not a guide how to get your first Shrabidium, but just how to get reliable Shrabidium automatically. Since for this we are going to be needing a teeny tiny amount of Shrabidium. If you want to see how to get your first Shrabidium, watch the video in the description. For the automation of this process we are going to be using robots from open computers. So first of all we need an HE to RF converter to input energy into the electronics assembler. And we can also put a power converter here to have cables go to your computer or the assembler or whatever. So this both works, but you can't connect cables directly to the HE to RF converter. Anyways, we will need at least a computer case tier two, else this is not going to work. But for the memory, the hard drive, the CPU and the graphics card, you don't necessarily need tier two and this would probably also be enough if I just put one in here but just to be safe you can just put more in there if you perhaps want to use the robot for something else later as well. Anyways a few more upgrades a screen and a keyboard to even access the robot itself without needing an external computer. We also need to put a disk drive in here to even run the operating system and inventory upgrades, so it has an inventory, inventory control upgrades, so it can take items into its hand, and a EEPROM with the Lua BIOS. Don't just use the normal EEPROM, you're gonna specifically need the one with the Lua BIOS. Anyways, once that is done, you press assemble, and then you wait for 200 seconds. If you do this in creative, it is going to do it instantly, but if you do it in survival, it is going to take energy and it is going to take a while. I should also add that since this converts power slower than this one, if you just place this next to the HE to RF converter, it is going to work slower than if you place a power converter between them. Anyways, here we got our robot. Next up, we need a block that is proof against small explosions. For this, I'm gonna use the concrete bricks, even though you could use normal concrete probably and obsidian or whatever. Anyways, we also need to make sure that nothing around it can be set on fire because your base might be burnable, I don't know. And you can do that by placing glass, for example, as you can see, it doesn't burn. Uh, you can also just like surround it with pressure plates, that also works. But the easiest way to do it is to just build blocks, solid blocks that don't burn all around. Actually, you can just use solid blocks that burn as well. But the important part is that it needs to be open here. So this can burn, which is an issue. So either you just place a pressure plate right here or you place glass below here, which should also work. Right from the hole and left from the hole, you need a container like a chest, for example. And then we are going to place our bot facing the chest over there. This robot is going to run out of power somewhere, so we're gonna place a charger here. And then you can place a lever or redstone block or whatever to actually have a charge. Obviously, the charger itself needs to be connected to the power converter. Next up, we're gonna need an ejector and an inserter and another inserter and a Shrabidium transmutation device. Then we're gonna connect these two with a belt and put a hopper on top where we can put another storage thingy. You could just use a chest for this one, but chests might connect to chests next to them, so I'm not going to do that in this case. Anyways, here I'm going to put another ejector, which then goes into a sorter, which then goes back into here. Now the reason I said that about the connecting is because I'm gonna put another crate here. If I put a chest here, it would turn into a double chest and I don't quite like that. Anyways, inserter and then connect this to the inserter. The upper side, which is the orange one, will be set to whitelist and you're gonna put Sharanium into there and then the yellow side, which might not be the yellow side depending on which rotation you build this in, but the side that points to this chest, you are also going to put to whitelist and then put a red coil capacitor in here. I would recommend using two red coil capacitors because if one is currently being used by the robot, the other one can be used by the Shrabidium transmutation device. 
and this will just make it run a bit more smooth and a bit more fast. Next up what we have to do is install an operating system. I would recommend using OpenOS but you could theoretically use other ones if you know what you're doing. Anyways just slap that into the disk slot and turn the robot on. You'll need to type install in here and then wait a bit. Actually, no, press uh, type Y in and then wait a bit. If you have a better CPU installed, this should be faster. It is recommended to reboot it. Now your robot is fully working and with that I mean we can write a program for it to actually do the work we want. So you're just gonna write edit and then put a program name there like subscribe because I want you to subscribe. In here we first want to import two things like robot and component. These two you can write whatever you want but I would recommend you actually name it robot and you name this component to avoid confusion. Then we are going to start a while loop and obviously we will have to end it at the end. First of all we want the robot to suck which means it is going to take an item out of the chest then component dot inventory underscore contro controller dot equip that is not how you write which basically means that the item it now has in here will be equipped into the hand slot then we're gonna have the robot turn left and now we are going to need another loop and this time it's a for loop. So i is the number we start with and 10 will be the number it counts towards. So it will do what is in here 10 times in a row before going to what comes after. And what we want it to do 10 times is to just use the item it has in its hand, which is just a player right click action. This loop I have in here just so I don't have to write robot.use 10 times because that is annoying. Then we will have it turn left again. So it is now facing this chest instead of the concrete. Then we will equip what is in that slot again, which is air. So basically it unequips what it has in its hand, with, which is now the discharged red coil capacitor. Then we are going to have it drop that into the chest over here. And now we are going to have it turn left twice again. You could also have it turn right twice because uh, 180 degree rotation is a 180 degree rotation. That does not really matter. Anyways, control S should save the file and control W is going to bring you out of the file again. So now you can just make that program run by writing the name of the program and it should take it out, it will it out, discharge it 10 times and now it dropped it off which now um, this is a little bit dangerous but only for players and now it has discharged both of the red coil capacitors which means if they get charged again they get put out here, get brought here and the robot will just do that again. So now you can just drop however much uranium you want in here and you will get your shraranium out here without having to constantly worry about having to manually discharge the red coil capacitors. If you want higher production I can also show you a stackable design. For this I'm going to use 9 of the transmutation devices because they are way slower than this one. You could probably use like 100 or even more. Anyways on top of here I am going to place conveyor grabbers and a belt that goes all the way. From here out we need to connect the output and then the conveyor ejectors go below here. At the end we are going to need our sorter again and put the belt in here. On the side facing the robot once again we are going to whitelist the red coil capacitor and now on the opposite side we are going to whitelist the shraranium. And obviously we will need to connect this to the chest next to the robot. 
We are also going to be needing a few more conveyor grabbers for the uranium and over here we can place our crates again. This once again is the input crate but I am going to be needing an ejector and an inserter for this design and then I am going to right click this side of the ejector with a screwdriver and bring a belt all this way and then from here out back in here. So when we now put uranium ingots in here and all of these are filled up the uranium is just going to go back in here so it won't fall off the end of the band and get voided. Anyways conveyor inserter in here and we can actually also change the side here of the input. So so now we can bring the belt over here. Now a big difference with this design is that you should not use more red coil capacitors than you have Schrobidium transmutation devices because that is going to make them drop off and either way with this design we are inevitably going to have some downtime. However since we have way more Schrobidium transmutation devices it will still be way faster. So just drop them off. There is actually two things I forgot to say in the tutorial. If we turn him off and he is not rotated correctly, we will have to do some manual fixing for that, which does not mean we're gonna mine him and place him again, because that might cause some other issues, but that means we're gonna type in Lua to get into the Lua environment. And then we are just going to do robot dot turn left once because he needs to turn left only once right here and then this should be fixed. If you want to get out of the Lua thingy you just do control C and you are back in the normal environment again. Also I noticed one issue of my program and that is that the explosion this causes makes the items that are right here on the belt be picked up by the bot which can be fixed quite easily so before we are going to end this while loop to have it repeat again we are just going to do operating system dot sleep and then have it not do anything for like four seconds anyways this would cause another issue so you would have to do local os equals require open brackets os and now the bot should actually work fine it just gets a little bit of extra downtime oh no that is horrible but i do already have a fix for that issue you are either going to use some pipe transportation system from another mod or you will have to use vanilla hoppers and of course you could also use the ntm pneumatic tubes but in here they are entirely safe from the explosion and that means no more issues should occur and that's it now it is perfectly working do keep in mind that it will only run faster if you actually drop more than one stack on here because each of the Schrobidium transmutation devices has a buffer of one stack if you really care to circumvent that you can just put a stack ejection upgrade next to the input crate and then put the stack in here then it will output more so it will get evenly distributed or somewhat evenly. Do keep in mind that these issues do not occur at all if you are using the non-stackable design. Anyways if you like this video like and subscribe. I will sometimes make more tutorials but mainly survival videos and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.